Hello, how is it going? This is Fake Hercon Ratchi once again with another Legends of Rune Terror video. Today I'm going to share with you guys a deck that features Hecarim, which is good because Hecarim hasn't really been competitively viable for a while. But this deck is popping off in Asia at the moment. I'm not sure who's been piloting it. I believe it might be the rank 1 and 2 player. Please feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. But, you know, this deck looks super cool. I want to talk about it for a sec because it uses Shark Chariot. It uses Monkey Idol. Playful Trickster, which, to be honest... I'm not sure about the three copies of it, but I'm probably not the best at piloting it, so I'll leave it for now. Citrus Coria and of course Hecarim. This deck just seems really pog, besides the fact that you just do some powerful early game Shadow Isles stuff. You actually have the ability to control a board quite effectively with File Feast and make it rain. Uh, Monkey Isle provides sheer value and chip damage and you'll eventually just beat them down. I think the uh, interaction between the Monkey Idol with the Ephemeral units and Shark Chariot as well as Citrus Coria on your opponent's turn is kind of interesting. This deck just seemed really cool. We are, as I said, we're three and two, but I definitely misplayed a couple of the games. Be curious to see how this deck performs over, you know, 20 games. I think it looks really pog and it beats up on the greedy decks like Lee Sin. So very cool deck. Let's go have a few games. Hope you guys have a fantastic day and don't forget to leave a like. It makes a huge difference to the performance of the videos. Thank you. What's up, Sudden? So we can, we're going to try and go under Sudden. I know Sudden's always on his fucking Yetis and now he's running Garen. So we want to go under him. We might be chilling. I think I want to get these Shark Chariots into the field. Uh, To be fair, Black Caretaker next turn just feels like it pushes like the most amount of damage. I could be greedy and like play a Shark Chariot this turn, but we can get that done later. The problem is he runs like Detain. Alright, I think this turn we're actually going to play double Shark Chariot and just go nuts with uh, Stalking Shadows. I walk into an issue where if I go for this line and I don't find the unit, I'm in trouble. So I'm going to play one for now. Okay, this is a good chump blocker, but I think I have to play the one that's not ephemeral. Where are you? Please, I have connections. Uh, is there a reason for me to consider making this trade? As of right now, I don't think so. This turn's gonna be chill. I'm not gonna swing with lots of my key units here. I'm just gonna kind of like get a little bit of chip value. Yeah, it would have been cool to have gone for the Shark Chariot last turn to get a bit more value, but yeah, to be honest. We do need to get some card draw. I'm going to play the Glimpse now. So we'll see how much mana he spends this turn. Soldier, to me. 
Can I afford to play Hecarim knowing that I can only block a couple of units here? Going down to two is fine. I don't know if I want to actually block the Yetis here. Like, I probably need to keep Hecarim on the field. It's hard to say. The, 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 the open attack is really insane. Like, that's almost a full board plus Hecarim. I wish there was a way for me to like protect the Hecarim, but there is not really. So I won't get like super value on the rest of the attackers here. I'm pretty sure I'm always playing Stalking Shadows. But I can't risk not open attacking. So good Stalking Shadows to find an Ephraimu unit to play before Hecarim. This is the only play though. This is truly the only play we have. Like the best case scenario is that he can't actually, like he has to block with Sithria, that's the best case scenario. And then we somehow survive next turn, coming back into our turn, we can play the Harrowing and that should hopefully be enough. <laughs> And then we just try and avoid the overwhelm units. What did I catch? So I'm just gonna go Vile Feast here, set up a chump blocker and then play Doom Beast. The aim of the game here is to avoid anything that has overwhelm. Moose? Moose is fine. Maybe I should I should have probably played one more unit here. I'm gonna stalking shadows. Rekindle is pretty good. Pretty fantastic. Block. Block. Block, block, block. This looks pretty good. Actually, sorry, this looks better. I think I want to clear this with Mage Seeker before he actually plays a six cost spell as well. Battle Fury? Fantastic. Fantastic to see that from our opponent. Sudden. I'm about to go to town next turn. So we'll pass for now. We'll just go in for the hiring next turn and this should hopefully be a clean game. Yeah, this, this is just really insane. Like I go, I go as far, if I want to play super safe, I don't swing with the Hecarim. Gee, I don't swing, <laughs> I don't swing with the Hecarim that doesn't have overwhelm. This is if I want to be super safe. But for the sake of like, you know, the play and how cool it looks. 
Let's swing with the Hecarim as well. That is not a firm reel. <laughs> that was a mistake, by the way. I should have swung with the uh, non ephemeral Hecarim first to push more damage, but that's okay. <laughs> Flee while you can, coward. Gee, so toxic, Hecarim. Uh, Thresh Hecarim. This deck's actually not running a tremendous amount of healing. So we can get away with just kind of pushing as much face damage as possible. And then maybe going for some a little bit of reach. Yeah, this turn's gonna be Butcher, definitely. They're running Icefell Archer. They're out there. Looks like we're not playing Icefell Archer. I'm pretty sure you swing with both here, if I'm not mistaken. Monkey Isle is a pretty good draw. Uh, not anymore. Not anymore. Let's see what we can find from this. Yep, Blighted seems pretty good. Was that brittle? Yeah, that's fine. So we probably don't want to play the Ephraimoe one yet. We more than likely just want to play Black Kitaka here. And have the one that sticks on the board. <laughs> we'll be forcing our opponent to actually use their Frostbite effects on Ephraimoe units if that's actually something that he wants to do. Okay, we can't afford to pass here. I have to develop the monkey idol. Even though he can like potentially trade into it. Yep. Pretty sure we go for black hit taker again this turn. going to allow us to push a little bit of damage and also play Doom Beast this turn. We'll be flipping his Thresh and his deck does run Frostbite. I think it's still worth though. Alternatively I can swing and play Citrus Courier but that doesn't seem like a fantastic play. This just seems like the most reasonable play I can think of. Oh, he's playing the box. Honestly, I didn't expect that to happen. Probably because that was Thresh's box, right? One sec. Yeah, where'd that box come from? I can't actually see, it's a little bit frustrating.
Yep, this seems reasonable. <sighs> yeah, Citrus is not achieving a tremendous amount this turn. down to some pretty low numbers here. So the rough idea here is that maybe I can play Harrowing and get back some monkeys. Unfortunately, we won't be getting back any monkeys. So that's less than fantastic. So we just have to play Citrus Courier for now. We have lethal. I repeat, we have lethal. All possible ways of staying alive, at least. So he has a crystal arrow, which is a bit of an issue. At the moment, he's pushing a fair bit of damage. I think I say we just go for the make it rain, right? And one hits the face. Looks pretty good to me. <laughs> Lack of healing in this deck though. That's the issue with it. I think what I, what I had to do there was use the make it rain. Either A, win the game. Or at best, we clear the, uh, we clear the three ones. You had a fair bit of one HP units in the field. There's a possible chance that we kind of like survive and then we force them into redeveloping or playing at, uh, Ash's Crystal Arrow prematurely or just not having lethal on board sim simply. And I, uh, at some point I might be able to play the Harrowing that turn. This looks like a pretty fantastic opener. Especially against uh, Lee Sin. Lee Sin and Tarek, to be specific. It's kind of interesting. All right, so we have some pretty good plays here. Basically on turn three, I can play the Monkey Idol and then at least Black Caretaker gets a bit more value on our turn four. Cause this hand, this hand can go either way. We can play like super early. Do I just trade here? No, I don't think so. Yeah, I think next turn is going to be Curse Keeper and Butcher. He's not going to have a fantastic two play. Alternatively, if he has two cheap spells, which is a long shot, and he has Claws of the Dragon in hand, that would be a little bit crazy. Okay, this is pretty good for us. So we can like potentially trade off like one of our units. Which is like, okay. You probably want to use one of the gems now to buff up one of the gift givers. Alternatively, he'll just do this. So do I swing with the aristocrat to put this down? No. We don't swing like that. 
I don't want to give him a good trade. Yeah, so if I swing with the Aristocrat, he's more than likely tanking this damage anyway. And then he gets value from his gems for being able to heal up his units. So potentially Zed comes down, we're pretty much locked into playing Monkey Idol this turn. Our board's gonna kind of be full though, which is a little bit of an issue. So if we're, if we're fortunate enough next turn, maybe we don't have to play... ...play a Caretaker. This turn is looking a little weird. One of the only reasonable plays I have this turn is to play Playful Trickster. Mostly to either aid deny healing, or it really depends on how he trades here. We might even just Playful Trickster, the 3-2 here. I'm just mostly looking to deny healing at this point. And try and force him to use some resources. Like even a deny is reasonable at this point. Like, we don't get any value from this rally. I am truly honored, protector. You honor me with He also didn't play enough spells this turn. <laughs> That's Hecarim. Hecarim looked like a fantastic draw at the moment. Honestly, no point for me to play anything. You might even just end the turn here, which is fine. You might think I'm waiting for him to commit resources, but unironically, I just don't have any true plays. Alternatively, Monkey Idol is a player. But if he passes, I think I'm fine. Because he obviously wants to play some spells. So I'm suspecting a gem on Tarak and a swing. We will actually attempt to trade off the units here. It's going to help us for playing Hecarim. Should 
choosing to heal the face. Puts him on exactly six mana. Mm, Obliterate's going to be very powerful for my opponent. If that's what he found from Solari Priestess. Yeah, that's pretty powerful. So he heals up to two, whereas if I just pass, he gets less healing, so we pass. I'm thinking a little bit about playing Make It Rain here. I can give him a lot of gems. Alternatively, I can clear a lot of his board too. Let's go for it. Landed actually pretty fantastic for us. I think I like where these have landed. Not even the Mentor is kind of a good thing for us. Mostly the fact that we're like trimming down his board is fantastic. We found this single copy of Harrowing. This poor bill will be denied. The fact that he obliterated the Hecarim is it kind of feels bad. Obviously we can't revive it. So he got us pretty good there. So at the moment he's contemplating whether to use a Bastion on the Eye of the Dragon or not. I would say against any aggro deck, if you can protect Eye of the Dragon, you probably should. And I think I honestly avoid giving him the gems. Gems are probably going to do more harm than good than the granting of the board state. Like I don't really mind that he keeps granting an ally. Because it ain't no lease in. He's going to bash in here. It's as if he wants to protect his mentor here. But I honestly do not care that much. Probably put damage on the Tarek. Just avoid the most damage here simply. We can go as far as to rally. I kind of forgot about this line. And he could potentially take good two good trades on us. I think at this point, I'm... I kind of didn't see this line if that far ahead, but I think giving him the gems now might be okay. For the fact that we can get two fantastic trades here. Yeah, no, this is fine, I think. I am sitting on pretty good open attack value as well. Yeah. There is nowhere left to go but up. The mountain endures. Fair enough. I kind of got thrown off a little bit there. I think we just push, right? We just go for a big push. <sighs> Probably get rid of the spider, honestly. This is going to help us to push a little bit more damage. There you are. I mean, he's going to eventually be able to play Lee Sin for a lot of damage. I wonder what this is all about.
uh, claws of the dragon didn't even come down, so. All right. We put him down to two without any counterplay. Okay, so basically he can play the issue here is that he can play Lee Sin and maybe kill me in one turn. That's not much of a stretch. It suddenly looks a little bit harder to kill me in one turn. I think we might have a mirror. I mean, it's, it's not Lee Sin, so I don't mind. Well, hey, hang on, hang on, hang on. No, he can still do this. He can still make this happen. Everything has one HP, so this is fine. I realized that if he had Lee Sin, he would have played it before playing all those spells. So lucky for us, he didn't find it. Otherwise, he might have just got us here. Monkey Isle is just granting so much chip damage. Well, I guess that's a play. Let's go for the open attack here. We have Playful Trickster. GG.